So I stopped being able to find the pills. Either I couldn't afford them or they were running out in the street. And then if I couldn't get them, then I would turn to like other prescription drugs. Start, we stop, we go, we go get it done. Get it, we start, we go get it done. Start, we stop, we go, we go get it done. Anthony's rum. What's going on, everyone? I'm Anthony. You know me as Anthony's World. We are back on the Living Icon podcast. We got a special guest all the way from Canada. Yes. Man, such a fucking honor. But they're going to make me read this fucking paper once again. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here today with us, we have Cole Da Silva. <laughs> He's a 29-year-old entrepreneur, entrepreneur, specializes in online fitness, mindset, and business coaching tailored for personal trainers. As a licensed motivational speaker featured on YouTube's motive, what the fuck? Motiver- motiversity? Is that really, motiversity. is that a word? Yeah. Jesus, that's gangster. That, whoever <laughs> came up with that, that's awesome. Uh, draws a remark, comes from a remarkable journey of an overcoming Percocet addiction to, co-found, to co-founding a multi-million dollar venture with his partner, Brian Mark. Yeah. Eh, we talked about him earlier. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a dope ass dude. I got to meet him. You got to yes, introduce him. Together through PT domination, they're on a mission to empower personal trainers, nutritionists, and fitness professionals, helping them scale their online enterprises for life, financial freedom, while making a positive impact on the world. Oh, yeah, bro. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, God. What's up, bro? Thanks for having me, dog. This man, I'm hyped, man. This is, this is going to be a, a banger. This is going to be a banger, man. I'm excited. I told you a little bit last night about yeah. how we... Uh, like, I was like, we got to get him on the podcast. Yeah, you told me that. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And just like whenever you hear like how individuals get like turned on to your content and then they make decisions, it's always mm-hmm. like a dope story. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's probably like, what, nine months ago, nine months ago before I went on the um, my like cross country or overseas trip, mm-hmm. I sent her and I was like, I was like, yo, this motherfucker on the podcast, mandatory. Let's get it. Yeah. And she was like, say less. <laughs> say less. And we did it. Dude, she now we're here. Too, Cause she was on my ass. All right. She was on my ass. She followed up multiple times. Hey Cole, what's going on? And because it's just me, because I'm a dumbass, for lack of a better term, and never get an assistant to help me with anything. Yeah. She was just making sure that I was following up and following up and following Love up. Love that. Here we go. Yeah, all the mm-hmm. way from Canada. Yeah. How's it how you liking the Scots though? I really like it. Yeah. I really like it. So we've been like driving around, exploring, just kind of seeing how it is. And one of the things that we obviously talked about today a little bit, and I'll say it again, is it's the cleanest place I've ever fucking been to. Yeah. We've traveled all over the world between like different places in Europe to Australia, throughout the States consistently. And I've never seen a place cleaner. Yeah. Like it's all perfect. Everything's placed perfectly. <laughs> There's not even fucking telephone wires anywhere. Yep. It's just clean as shit. Clean. I really liked it. Yeah. It's, again, I, it's, one of the biggest things I say about this area that I love is that it's so clean. Yep. I and really then you like get like seven months of pretty fucking perfect weather. And you know, right now it's a little hot. It's I'm a little like, hot right I'm now. Hot. I'm like, bro, my shoes are untied because I'm fucking sweating. Right <laughs> like this is like, dude, right now it's still a little hot. Yeah. I say that it's starting to cool down. You guys are crazy. You guys are <laughs> but you crazy, got, dude. but you got to remember. So like most people that live here, we don't, you don't, you don't live here all, you don't live here in the summer. Mm. Like you typically are just now coming back. Really? Like, yeah. Like we came, we just came back. Mm. I, I don't. Stay here during the summer. Fuck that. It's too hot. too hot. Yeah, you go up to either like Flagstaff, Colorado, Montana, somewhere like, you know, in the mountains and get away for the summers where it's nice and chill and relaxed. Well, I get that too. Because I mean, even with the uh, winter in Canada, I'm like, we're trying to find a place that's a little See? bit warmer. Because so here during the winter is minus 35 mm, degrees Celsius per, in the winter, dude, is a next level. We cold. might get in the 30, high 30s here. It's, it's a We disgusting. might. <laughs> we might get in the high 30s. It's going to be awesome. So... This is epic, man. So I found your videos and I was like, yep, we got this one. He cusses a lot like me. Doesn't yep. give a fuck what people say. Never. Says the fuck word more fucking times than <laughs> fuck yourself in a fucking dictionary. Yes, yeah. Man, yes. <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. So let's get started. Let's dive in, man. Where did this uh, Where did this start for you? Where did this journey, where did this, where's life taking you and where is it, where did, where did it start for you, man? Everything started for me when I looked in the mirror after struggling with addiction and just kind of like coasting through life and realized that I was becoming the individual that I always said I didn't want to become. So for everybody who doesn't know my story, I used to be an iron worker, grew up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Let's be fucking real. If you guys are all from the States, none of you guys are going to know what that means. <laughs> it's across the border from Detroit. All right. Murder capital of Canada for a very long time. A lot like very small town, darker vibes and was just lost for a very long time. And I like, didn't really have any purpose, but then fitness was the way that I got out. 
results already from fitness every yeah. stem from fitness building that body right building yeah. that mind right it's a challenging thing when you start building that so um tell me about your past man like i want to dive into that if you don't mind yeah. um talking about it because i know you know you overcame the percocet addiction mm -hmm. so when did when did the drugs get entered in your life and how is that you know sculpted and molded you today yeah so growing up in my entire childhood i was experimented with everything unless it had a needle that was something that like really freaked me out. So I never went down that path, but everything from smoking weed to smoking crack once it was just like an experimentation game. So it was always there. The addiction thing never really came into play until I became an iron worker. And I was kind of telling you guys about this earlier. Um, after around a year into iron working, I used to wake up with chicken feet is what I like to explain it. Mm -hmm. So like my hands were so cramped up and the way that I explain it, like go like this with your hand for a second and flex as hard as you possibly can. And now push your finger in your forearm. So it's like rock solid. I'd wake up like that. Ugh. And it was like, I couldn't fucking move. And I was living in my sister's spare bedroom at the time. And she would have to help me, like literally come into the room and like dig her fingers into my forearms, to, like get my hands to move. And then I'd be able to go to work. But I was fucking 21 years old. Yeah. So That's... I went to doctor after doctor after doctor. They're like, take ibuprofen, work out, like, no shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. stretch. Um, and it just didn't really help. Everybody talks about how like it's great to have free healthcare. It's not. They don't know what they're doing. And not a lot of doctors understand the human body when it comes down to fitness and nutrition, etc. So I went into problem solving mode like I did my entire childhood, my entire life and found a drug that would supplement the plane. And it was Percocets. Somebody that I knew on the job site, I'll keep his name out of it, uh, was just taking them kind of like playing around. So I took one, loved the feeling of it. One led to two, two led to four, four led to seven. And then it was like on a day where I was running out of pills, I would like supplement them and crack them up and make sure I could get my four in a day. That was like the minimum without me feeling pill sickness. And then on the days where I would go and stock up with my dealer, I'd have seven plus every single day. Once I hit seven, cool. that was like the blackout moment for me. But I wasn't like a lazy addict. I would eat four to seven while working outside as an iron worker, scaling the building, building the building, putting the sheets on and everything else. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that for me, like, I was one thing I've never really, mm -hmm. never saw, like, that side of things. I it's never, a weird thing because yeah. it was like I never went down that path because it was like partying is the thing I always uh -huh. need to do. Like, I always wanted to party and I always went down it, but it was more because I didn't have anyone. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of fucking friends that wanted to do anything else. We just wanted to drink. They just wanted to do drugs. They just wanted to go to the bar. Mm -hmm. And even though I was in that lifestyle, I could experiment with drugs and stay away from them. It was Percocets that was, like, the turning point for me because... I couldn't work without them. Yeah. Like I couldn't live. And then after a certain amount of time, it just became like that was my normal. Like no matter what. I'd eat really? fucking four if I was running out, seven plus if I was filled up again. And that was just my everyday thing. No matter what, I'd start the day. And you were able to function pretty like, yeah, able I'd to speak function. To you like this. Like it'd be completely fine. But I would just be numb, no emotion. I wouldn't feel anything. There was one story I'll never forget. Uh, we were working outside, and I did MBSE ironworking. So I did metal, metal building system erector ironworking. So I wouldn't do, like, the skyscrapers. I'd do kind of buildings like this. Okay. So we'd do massive warehouses, some bigger buildings, some anywhere between, like, 40 and 65 feet high, like airport hangars, stuff like that. But we would come in, stand all the steel. Then we would roof it with regular roof sheets that would seam together. Then we would clad it, put the siding on. Then I would trim it, and then we'd leave. But I would do all of that the entire time and I would just be like numb to everything around me. There was one story where we we're outside. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. So do the fucking math, everybody. <laughs> um, so I, it was around five to 10 degrees Celsius outside and it was starting to rain and I was in my harness and a wife beater. My body was just steaming. Everybody apparently had already went to lunch and I was just out there zombie out working. People are like in jackets, fucking cold as shit. And I'm just zombied working. And my friend came up to me and he's like, you need to put something on. Cause like people are now starting to ask questions. Like something's wrong. Damn. Like you haven't eaten in six and a half hours. You're not taking any fucking breaks. You don't feel the cold. You don't feel the heat. You're just going. And it's just what it turned me into. I was just a workhorse. Damn. I'd show up and just zombie out for 10 hours. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Well, you know, good to, good to have you here now. Worked, I love dude. that. I it love worked. that. So you told me uh, that you quit cold turkey. Mm -hmm. How, what was that? What was that process? That's, that's not, uh, that's not normal. It was a lot. <laughs> that's not, I was going to say like, it was a probably lot. a lot that goes through that. So explaining it, I always say cold turkey because it wasn't like I weaned it off them. All right. It wasn't like I went to rehab to quit them. I didn't get a lot of help. What ended up happening to me is I stopped being able to find them. So it was like my dealers that I had were like, dude, we can't get them anymore. Or 
because I was just spending my money willy nilly. I was only making like 3,500 to five G's a month as an iron worker. I was already $20,000 in debt because I had taken out a loan to buy a shitty ass Mazda three. I was good at talking. So me and my older brother talked him down from a $10,000 price tag to a $3,000 price tag and the rest of the money went to drugs and drinking. Damn. So I was just fucking myself left and right. So I stopped being able to find the pills. Either I couldn't afford them or they were running out in the street. And then if I couldn't get them, then I would turn to like other prescription drugs. There was one uh, guy that I used to work with, again, I'll keep his name out of it, that had extra strength Robaxa set prescribed to him from the doctor, but he didn't like taking them. So when I ran out of perks, I would eat 20 to 30 of those a day. Ooh. So it was like, that was my thing. And then it would go back to perks. And then it was just, the harder it became to find the pills, the more I started to realize who I was and like what I was doing. And to the find more disgusted them. I got as myself. Because it was like, the more sober I would get, the more I would remember things that would happen that made me feel embarrassment and resentment and anger and frustration. And dude, one day I was just like, I'm done. And I just fucking went through the pill sickness. I literally, my like, knees aching, legs shaking, sweating like crazy every day, feeling like I was going to fucking die. It was just horrible. I just uh, went through that's, it. That's that mind, right? That mind yeah. can do it. Just decided. Ah, that's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Well... Life changes. Life's crazy. This is yes. what it, this is what this is about. You have to yes. go through these traumas, these experiences, in order to be able to make something great. I agree. So now we're gonna dive into your greatness that you're creating and building and have built. So, for people that don't know what you do, yeah, you help fitness, you help fitness coaches, coaches yeah. grow their business, scale their business, and build it. What what has been the process of like that of learning it? And did did you get into this because you built your own fitness pro yes. fitness company thing? Is that what happened? Yeah. So. Ironworker found my current best friend and business partner, Brian Mark, that you talked about. He became my first fitness coach, told me verbatim on the first call we ever did, all right, you're going to do a fitness competition. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, either you're doing it or I'm not fucking coaching you. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm doing it. Yeah. I, I needed help, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, dope. And then after I paid him my first $350, because he charged $350 a month at that point, he's like, also, by the way, I figured out that you had an addiction. If you drink or do drugs, I'm going to fire you and I'm going to keep all your money. I was like, okay. So it was the accountability I needed. Uh, we trained. I won my first fitness competition, first in overalls. And then I was like, I'm going to become a coach. <laughs> every fucking fitness yeah. competitor in the world, they yeah. do every single time. Uh, he's like, no, you're not. He's like, but I see that you want to be. So he's like, if you win your next show and you get certified as a CPT, like personal trainer, I'll bring you on to my team. Now keep in mind, I was still training or working 10 to 12 hours outside as an iron worker. So I would do that. Then I would go to the gym for two hours. Then I would get home for like 45 minutes. Then I'd go box for an hour and a half because I boxed for like five and a half years. And then I would study slash learn for around 45 minutes to an hour, sleep four hours, and then go do it again the next day. And I did that for six plus months. Won my second show, first in overalls, and then came back to him, knocked on the door and was like, what's up, doc? And he's like, what? Well, fuck my life. Because I just backed him in my car. He talks <laughs> yeah. about this all the time. Yeah. He's like, he basically had set me up to like fail because he didn't have a position. Yeah. But he was like, he saw it. and was like, okay. So he brought me on as a trainer. Um, within like four months of us doing like half ass him just teaching me, I quit my iron working job and got a job as an in-person trainer up north, trained people in person doing group classes and one-on-ones for three and a half months. I hated my fucking life. It was atrocious, like horrible hours. They fucked me and didn't give me the pay that they were supposed to. I just didn't really like it. So I quit and within three months I made $10,000 a month organically online. And then that was all she wrote. We just scaled our business consistently, like went like super, super hard, built our business aesthetic nation, our yeah. own fitness business to 60 plus thousand on a monthly basis recurring. And then Epic. once that happened and we kind of lost passion for just the fitness, we're like, we can fucking help people do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't, do you train anymore? Like, like personally I just train? brought it back. I was going to say, I was going to say, yeah. did you, yeah. I just brought it back. And the reason why I brought it back is because I had a conversation with the homie Wes Watson and a couple other people that I know and the biggest disconnect that I see when individuals try to start businesses, especially in the fitness industry, is that they shouldn't be fucking speaking. And that's the problem. Okay. You get a lot of coaches nowadays that aren't fit, all right, that don't know what they're talking about, that aren't living the lifestyle, that want to coach because they see the monetization style in it, mm -hmm. when they shouldn't be fucking talking. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I know everything. Are yeah. you kidding me? I'm like, I've just got a couple certifications. I teach based off of what helped me. Like, yeah. I teach off of personal experience. But I think that's the best teacher anyways. So I was like, you know what? All these coaches that should be doing really good in the industry aren't because they're not fit. Their mind isn't right. They're always self-sabotaging because they don't understand how to deal with self-doubt and their emotions. So I'm going to start helping people with their fitness and their mindset while also helping people with their business because they're all fucking correlated. 
Right there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Awesome. So we were talking about being a motivational speaker and like how you like to do that. And like we were talking about it last night, like how like how fun it is. And we're down to like, you know, collaborate on some stuff like that. So what what has that journey been bringing you down now? Because because last night you told me you're like, I do everything for free. So Mm -hmm. like, what is that journey like bringing you down? Well, this is the start of it. Yeah. Number one, so thank you. Hey. Okay, right, this is what I like to see. Um, when it came down to the motivational speaking, it happened by accident. And it wasn't like a thing that I planned to do or like I set a mission on it and attacked it step by step. Mm-hmm. It all just fell together. Because when it came, comes down to our business, when we started it, I was back end. My boy Brian was front end. Okay. So he's the acquisition side. I'm the coaching side. We've brought no money in from my social medias. We've never tried. It was just straight up building him, and then I was coaching. And then one day, I got sick of saying something and people not listening, so I just started bitching online <laughs> and like <laughs> yelling at basically everybody. Basically, like, this is your excuse. Let me tear it apart in front of the world so you listen, and then everybody else who uses that excuse also listens. And it just started fucking exploding. And then That's awesome. random things just started to come. Yep. Then uh, Motiversity, the YouTube channel that you looked at. They actually own 12 different channels with a combined following of over 19 million subscribers across social media. Damn. The main channel has 3 million subscribers. They're like, we love your voice. We love what you do. Like, would you want to partner? I'm like, yes. I'm like, I'd love the opportunity. So I just send them videos and we just speak and do a bunch of stuff like that. We've actually got some pretty cool stuff planned for the future. That's epic. And it's just, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to get in front of more people, tell my story. And again, just get people out of their own fucking way. Yeah. Because everyone could be making millions. Yeah. There's not a shortage of money in this world. There's not. But people just have the most weak, bitch-ass minds possible nowadays. And I just want to hold that mirror up to everybody. Because if I can do it, if you can do it, then fucking anybody Anyone. else can. Yep. It's just them getting in their own way. So this podcast is about money. A lot of it's about money. Yeah. How much can a fitness, how much can someone make online? I love this shit. How much can someone actually make being I a fitness it. coach? So for Brian and myself, just to give you guys a baseline... We're super proud because we've been able to monetize everything that we've done and like step it up year by year. So we've seen the growth in the last six and a half years since I've been with Brian, we've made over 16.5 million. It was dope. It was dope. That's um, epic, bro. Congratulations, and we have coaches, bro. bro. We have coaches doing amazing things. So yeah. we've helped 5,000 coaches be able to quit their job and go full time online. Epic. So like that alone to me, I don't give a fuck how much you're making. Massive win. I'm like, hell yes. Yeah. And then we got the numbers that we always track. Yeah. We've got 330 plus that have hit $10,000 a month organically in their business. Everything we do is organically. No Facebook ads. 10K a month. Yo, like, yeah, like people don't, you need to realize the power of that. That yeah, is bro. six figures. Like that is like, once you get to that point of where you're making, you can, do shit. You can start investing more into your yeah. business, investing more into your life. Like it is powerful. Like don't sweat the companies. Like, yes. like I'll, I'm around a lot of people and they're like, well, I want to make a hundred K a month. And I'm like, are you making five to 10 K a month? Yes, no. Well, then what the fuck are you talking, talking about? A hundred K a month, dog. <laughs> yes, like, like you're not in the yeah. same space. Like, so like getting people to be able to do that, that's super awesome. Yeah. What I, what I'm really like trying to do, like, I'm trying to do like the same thing in my industry, yep. but my industry is a little bit like different. Yep. Um, it's, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say like, it's harder, easier, but like, <clears throat> it's harder for people to create a business yep. inside of my industry because you have to have like ridiculous amount of licensing yep, yep. and stuff like that. So it's a little bit harder for people to create businesses, but I've been trying to come up with a way to help other entrepreneurs yep. create a business. Yep. And I don't know how to do that. So I might need to pick your brain one day yeah, and it. talk about that because like, it's, it's hard for me to like, like I want to help people make money, not just by trading, but also by creating a business in the space. But it's so like, it's so capital intensive well, dude, in our, in our, in our space. The reason why coaching in my opinion is the best is because there's no overhead. <clears throat> All you do is you're like, well, what was my problem? What did I overcome? Well, I overcame this. Dope. Let me teach up people how to do it. Yeah. That's why That's I think awesome. fitness coaching is so fucking lucrative. You can make so much goddamn money because all you're doing is showing your experience. So we've had the 300 plus hit 10K. We've had 50 plus hit 30K. We've had 40 plus hit 60K. Ooh. We've had 13 coaches make $100,000 a month organically in their business with no Facebook ads. And they do it every single month, month on end, bro. That's we have epic. one coach. Right now, I'll tell you about two. We have one coach right now named Don Lamb, my fucking homie, all right? And he's making between 270 to $480,000 a month in his business recurring organically. Ooh. 
no Facebook ads. And then same thing with my girl, Janelle. My girl, Janelle's story is crazy, bro. She used to be 780 pounds. She's lost 500 fucking pounds. She currently has 6,000 clients and she makes over $300,000 a month organically in her business. And she works four hours a month. Yo. Four hours, bro. It's That's insane, fucking dude. crazy. She would call her Mama J because she can literally be my mom. <laughs> is. We always joke around. That's about, yeah. awesome, man. The thing See, this is the power of social media, the power yeah. of like the online world, the power of business, man. This is so fucking cool. Dude. Helping people make money, helping people change their lives and helping people. This is why I do this. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. Like, when I'm able to help a fucking mom, I'll just use Janelle again. All right, I'll use Janelle. I'll keep her daughter's name out of it. Um, but my girl Janelle, her daughter has a disability. And the doctors told her that her daughter wouldn't live past the age of 12 because of what she was able to do based off of the information we taught her. Now she's 15 because she was able to hire the best fucking doctors in our entire country to be able to fucking give her everything that she needed. Man, that's I got goosebumps again. Yeah, bro. That's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. I know what it's like to have nothing. Yeah. And to be able to give someone the power to go make money off of a fucking post online. That's game over to me. Man, we got to we got to. We got some collaboration to do, dog. Yeah, <laughs> we got some. Yeah. That's epic, man. So, so it's realistic for people to make real money, real not just money. real money, like life changing money yes. too. That's awesome. So, what is your uh, space looking like for you now? What are you looking forward next to in this business space for you? Because are you trying to do things inside of fitness or outside of fitness? Are you trying to grow that, or what? What's your the what's main your thing that we're focusing on is is the main business. So we want PT Dom to be at 5,000 clients. We currently have 1,500 active. We've helped over 5,000. And again, it's weird how everything always aligns, right? Like you create a vision for yourself. We said the vision on the board that we wrote was 5,000 clients served. We didn't say 5,000 active clients. So technically we've done it already, but yeah. like, fuck my life. So the goal is 5,000 clients. The goals change always. And too. to get in front of people, yeah. the main thing. Like the fitness business and the mindset shit that I've launched to help individuals, I know it's going to grow. I honestly haven't been putting a lot of time into it. Last five and a half months, we've made 150 to 170 K just passively on the side. So it's doing decent. I haven't put much time into well, it, like, <laughs> but it's doing well. Like, it's doing well. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, dog. It's doing really well. The, the main thing that we're focused on. You're almost on, making though, 20 K a month from your side <laughs> hustle. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, but it's, it's, Get out of here. Again, we're, we're more focused on just the PT shit though. And yeah. this like me, out me and my boy knew, realized that it was like, he's very, like we kind of talked about it earlier. Mm -hmm. He's very like the outgoing, intense, like loud, can talk to anybody one. Mm -hmm. And I'm more like the reserved, sit on the back end and watch everything that's going mm -hmm. on. And then once I'm in the convo, I'm good to go. Yeah. So we realized recently, like we got to get the fuck out of our houses and do shit. Like if we want to build a business, we need to get in front of telling you come to Scottsdale, bro. Yeah, I know. Everybody keeps saying it. Come dude. to Scottsdale. It's crazy out here. So, man, I got one more question for you. What is your like what is your philosophy on life right now? Cuz then I'm going to ask you this probably over the next few years, but what is just your mm -hmm. philosophy on life right now? Where 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 life is heading and how it's been and and what is like do you have a philosophy on that? What do you mean? Give me some context. Like what is your like? What is your take on like? How, how do I how do I wear this? What do I? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to pull that out. I had to pull that out today. Um, what is your take like like your your I'm gonna say vision I guess for life, but like like what you've been through, and like how has that molded you? And then what is your take on if it happens to other people, and should it happen to other people? Because I know we talked about kids earlier, and we were yeah. talking about like how we have to put them through a hard time, yeah. right? And so it's like, what is your real take on that? Because like. Cause like, like I know I wouldn't be if I didn't have the shit that I went through. Yeah. It's something that's, it's, it's a very weird game I've been playing in my head on like watching my son grow up and having like deep emotional moments where it was like, this kid will never know. Like he will never know. I remember talking to my wife and she's like, I get it. And I was like, like crying being like, no, you don't like, yeah. he will never fucking know what it's like to see the shit that I saw when I was a kid mm -hmm. to go through the shit that I went when I was a kid, and not even just me, my siblings. I'm the middle child of five kids. Like the shit that we went through was insane. And I know people that went through even darker shit in our circle and around us. So playing that game in my mind right now has been like an ever going thing. Like every day I'm thinking about it. Like, okay, you said something earlier today that really sunk in where you're like, maybe my kid's purpose isn't to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. My wife has said that multiple times to me because when we started talking about him, I'm like, this motherfucker ain't working a nine to five. And I was like, I, no, too bad. Yeah. You're not doing it. But it, I got to just play that balance game. Yeah. So I'm just asking myself every day, like, how can I just be the best dad possible? 
Like yeah. my philosophy in life is play at the highest potential. Yes. That's why I push my body like to the breaking point every day and my mind every day. I force myself to do incredibly uncomfortable things because I just want to be like the saving grace for every individual in my circle and make sure that everybody's pushing forward. Yeah, I love that because uh, I, call, I call those people the lashers and it's kind mm -hmm. of a thing that I've come up with as I've been saying it for a while, but I call those people lashers. And what that means is that for my take on it is that um, you're willing to take anything for anybody. Oh, I like that. So like if you're a lasher, you're willing to do shit others want to make sure their life is more comfortable. I fucking like that. a and lot. And so, yeah, maybe that should be something we'll called it, call it the lashers. That's group. dope. Yeah. That's and dope. it's like, you that's for the men. Put that on a hat. Hey, maybe that's the better man project. The lashers. Yeah. Ooh, that's dope. I yeah. Really like that. So like, I'm, I'm really big into that because like, like I, I will put my, I'm the same way, man. I will put my mind through. Like I wake up at five, five thirty, like every morning. Mm -hmm. I fucking, I'm on the charts. I talk. Like I don't sleep. Like it's just yep. me. Like making sure that I'm getting everything fucking done yep. and making sure that everyone else can have the shit they want. So it's life, you know. And and like trying to like learn about the purpose of life is like kind of like been like I guess a journey for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know when you finally come to a point to where you realize like the purpose is what you make it. The purpose is what you yes. create it for. Yes. And then it can work. So everyone has this like this thing right now where they're looking for someone to give them the purpose of life. Yeah. And it's really fucking weird to me. That is like really weird to me that people are looking for that purpose. But like create your own. But then you said it last night. Like to me, you were like, you're like, yeah, but you're different. You know, if you yes. know, if everyone had that, then then everyone it would be different. It would and be the same. That's the thing, dude. Like I said it to you, and I've said it to a couple other people. Like I get where you're coming from. I understand it because I put myself through hell. Like to the degree where like my circle is like, Cole, you need to sleep. Like Daniel tells me I need to relax all the time. My wife is Breathe. like, you gotta sleep, dude. Because <laughs> there's sometimes I'll literally go like weeks with one to three hours of sleep, fucking four hours of sleep, because it's just what I end up doing. 3 a.m. every single day, no matter what. All right, grueling fucking morning routine, straight into a workout, nine hours of boxing a week now, cold plunges in the middle of the fucking winter with zero degree water. Like I force myself to do shit. But it's Love because I, I, I got a lot of shit going on in my head and I need to combat it. I'm like, yeah. and I just find ways to attack it. But again, I know not everybody thinks that way. Yeah. And it's that's where, again, the cocky side comes out of me where I'm like, you're either going to make it or you're not. Yeah, I've, I've had this time. I've had a hard time with it too recently because like trying to like find people that can fucking help you do what you want to do. Mm. And you're sitting there and I'm like, and I'm like sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? Just fucking do it. And they're like, but what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know, figure it the fuck out and yeah. fucking do it. And they're like, you're not telling us what to do. And then like my, um, my attorney, um, Nick COO sat me down one day and he was like, he was like, dude, you can't tell your employees to figure it the fuck out and fucking do it. And I was like, why not? I did. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, they're not you. That's why you run and if the they were, yes, you would, they dude. would be there. Like they would be where you're at. And I was yes. like, Oh, okay. I'm yes. an asshole. <laughs> Cause yes, the whole time dude. I've been like, create a fucking do this, create this business and figure it the fuck out. Yeah. And they're like, well, we don't know what to do. And I'm like, Oh my God. And then like, so it's, it's a hard one. It's, it's that finding that, that balance of that is really, really fucking hard, but it's really it, cool watching I, the business. I think it's also important to just, again, find your people, like yeah. find people that can help you do it because yeah. I get that mindset. Like we were talking and it, the way that it sounds like you grew up is you were that purebred entrepreneur. All right. Like that Gary V shit, lemonade fucking stand. You're going ham, yep. fucking hustling gum and shit like that. I wasn't like that. Yeah. I was doing like other hard shit. Mm -hmm. I was fucking running drugs for people and going down a darker path and a bunch of shit I'm not going to fucking incriminate myself with and whatever. <laughs> all right. I was doing other things and it wasn't until I changed my own life with fitness and with business mm -hmm. that I was like, Oh, I could do this. Yeah. And then I could help other people because like, I get that mindset of like, I'll have a vision and someone will be like, do it. And I'm like, motherfucker, I don't know what you are saying to do. It's yeah. just in my head. It's, it makes sense right? somewhere. And then once, once you take that step, then it's like, oh, okay. And then you start yeah. sprinting because you're like, now I know what direction to go in. But a lot of people just don't ever take that step and they just sit in their shit. So I want to talk about a little bit about mindset mm -hmm. um, because like you said that you don't like, you're like, like people don't realize like what the fucked up shit that goes on your head. Yeah, man. And um, as of recently, like I caught myself having more conversations with myself in my head. Mm. And I actually like, was talking to Megan and like there was like a period of time where I realized like I actually wasn't even talking to her. I was responding to her in my head. She would ask me questions and I would be responding to her and I'd be like, no, I told you. And she'd be like, 
I mean, she's like, what are you talking about? You didn't say a single word. Yeah. And I, I realized like, I am so comfortable in my head having conversations with myself yeah. and building things. Like I play it out in my head, step by step, plan it out. And like, it's a whole fucking demon in that. <laughs> like I yeah, call man. it the demon. I call yeah. it my demon in my head. And it's a whole fucking battle that you have to go through. And then once you can realize and conquer that demon, then you can fucking build the world and you can take over. Yeah. And so do you think that fucking craziness in your head is like the biggest part of you that's going to fucking drive you? And Yeah, 100%. Because I, I feel like I'm running from mine. Yeah. And that's why I'm fucking, that's why I'm constantly building and constantly growing. I'm definitely like to a certain degree, but there's also a lot of me that's just attacked that recently. Um, and the reason why I had attacked it is because I thought it was going to kill everybody. Like it was, it reached a point where right after I had my son, like two months, the first two months, dude, were death. Yeah. Like I'm, I, it's, I, it's hard for me to even explain. Yeah. And a lot of parents like cringe and don't understand how to react when I speak about this shit. But like, I didn't get over it. Like I didn't fucking want him. It was terrifying. I was like, I'm going to fuck this kid's life up. And my wife was sitting in the corner watching me like Cole's going to fuck this kid's life up because I I had no idea how to internalize any of the anger or how to fucking move through it or anything because it brought that fucking demon out. It brought a lot of shit out that I fucking had unresolved as a kid and a lot of things that were going on. But I just that's a scary thought, it. isn't it? It's yeah. a scary thought. It's fucking terrifying. When you're facing something like that in your life and you're sitting there in front of it and you're like, damn. Yeah. So it was uh, what helped me. And it was this simple statement from one of my girls, Natasha, fucking love her like a sister. And she just said, sit in it. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you're so used to just brooding force through everything that's ever been in your fucking path. Just pushing through, attacking, destroying barriers, fixing problems. She's like, you need to just sit the fuck mm-hmm. down and shut up. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then it was like him crying, freaking out. And then I would be like holding him. And then my wife would come save him. Like, like, okay. Like I got you, babe. Like I'll fucking, I'll take him. Cause she could see my anxiety, my anger and yeah. everything building up. And then Natasha came back and she's like, no, no, no. Tell Julia to leave. I was like, okay. And then, so the next time Julia came to do it, I'm like, babe, I love you, but fuck off. Like walk away. <laughs> yep. Leave. And so I'm just, and then it was just holding him, holding him, holding him. And then at three months, around three months of him being born, just changed dude yeah. it was like just through sitting in that like i had a massive shift nope. yep. and then this like calming intense energy just came out of me and it's it is it, like it is when, when you have kids man and uh the business side of it but like when the business and like you have kids and then you have like because you know at first like yourself was your kid yeah. and your business becomes your kid and yeah. then you have yeah. a kid that's funny that you said that shit yeah yep. it's and then when you actually have the fu- like the kids yeah because like at first like i was like obviously super excited too but like mm-hmm. it was like what the fuck yeah, and then bro. you actually have them and you talk about it like you think they're and you're like you're like dude i'm so fucking crazy i'm so fucked up like yeah, i got man. all this other shit and then like yeah man it's it's a battle and that battle is at the end of the day it's like it's fucking dope <laughs> I like it's it. just fucking dope it makes man you a fucking next level individual dude yep. i always say like the, the demons that are internalized in you are the emotions that you haven't understand uh, how mm-hmm. to deal with yet yep so like everybody says i'm battling my inner demons it's like what everybody says i'm battling my inner demon your demons to me are the emotions that you haven't learned how to regulate yep. the things that are like making you act out because you haven't faced them due to something that no. you've dealt with in some situation crazy like that threw me having that's, my boy dude that's like i used to have like super bad anxiety mm-hmm. like super super bad anxiety and i'd be like panicking and like yeah. i'd like freak out and then like i realized that my anxiety was probably like most likely just like me being excited about things dude, that's it yeah and like so just changing that narrative yes, on it for bro. me when i changed that narrative i love that i love I'm, that uh, you ever read the book relentless I've, I've heard about it, bro. I don't read no books, bro. bro I don't either. <laughs> I listen to it. Though. Okay, bad. <laughs> I listen shame. to it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a reader, bro. Yeah. I, it's like the, the, the whole like the whole thing. Read 40 pages nah, a dude. day, or read a book a month, and you'll become <laughs> successful. It's bullshit. That's I, also why I said the whole no working out thing. Like bro, you don't need to work out to be successful. Same as book for me. I fucking hate books. Yeah, dude. Dude, I've got dude. a bunch of books. If you guys watch my YouTube videos, you'll see them in the background. I haven't opened one of them up. <laughs> I, I order it, and I'm like, I'm gonna read this. Yes, week. yeah, dude. Nothing, bro. I've, Nothing, I am the, I'm the most ambitious non follow through person when it comes to reading. <laughs> dude, I, I have read. I've bought so many books, but I mean like, but like I just never understood it. Like I will sit there and I'll open a book and I'll read it, and the next thing I know. I'll have read like three pages yeah, dog. and I'm like, I don't remember a yeah. single fucking thing that Same I read my brain. That's what I'm saying. It's that, it's that, yeah. that other person, that conscious you listen, that you have. You oh. listen or you visualize my shit's YouTube. So yeah. it's like, you give me a book, I can't read it. But if you sit me down in front of like a YouTube podcast or 
again, just two people talking like we are right now, I'll watch three hours. Really? Just straight, and I'll just absorb it for See, some reason. I, I can't even do that, man. I, I'm, I'm getting to the point now to where I just want to be, like, I want to be around other fucking individuals yeah. that are doing the same shit I'm doing better or just doing it differently. Cool. And just, like, that's, like, I'm a, such a human interaction person now. Yeah. Like, I have to be around people. Like, I, I want to talk. I want to thrive. I want to be creative. I, like, I can go sit fucking... I can go, like, I can sit right here and talk for 17 hours straight. See, that's cool. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm, that, I'm that way, man. That's been... I've, I thrive off of that human connection. That's, like, one reason why, like, I love doing this podcast is because yeah. I get to talk to people. I get to meet people. I get to do all kinds of cool fucking crazy shit like this. And Yeah. It's just fucking epic. That's what I'm forcing myself to do now. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out You'll of your enjoy office it. You'll enjoy and it. And start talking to people. So, what is your goals as far as business-wise? Like, what is, like, like what's a big, big goal that yourself that you want for, you know? I want to never fly commercial again. That's hey, hey, hey I love that. Shit. I can't stand yep. it, dude. I see people get on a jet, and I'm like, all right, motherfuckers, one day, one day. Yeah. That video that you posted, I was like, okay, that's going on the fucking goal board. Right there. <laughs> I really put it down. So, are you big on goal boards? Do you write your goal uh, boards like that? Uh, I Not usually, <clears throat> but I have been recently. And it's because I feel like a lot of individuals, unless it's in sight, it's out of mind completely. Okay. Um, and I always base it off of one example. Did you ever hear about like the candy bowl office exper- office experiment? There was Why a, does that sound familiar? So there was an office that did a candy bowl experiment. Long story short, they put a candy bowl on everybody's desk, and then they measured how much candy was eaten. And at the end of each day, for a week straight, they moved it a foot away. Until the last day of the week, it was in the conference room and the door closed. And nobody ate the fucking candy. It's because out of sight, out of mind. Well, I feel like a lot of individuals coast through life because they don't look at their goals. Dude, yeah. Even my phone background has 168 pounds because I need to hit that weight to be able to box the weight class that I want to box Love at. That. So it's like I always want to have something. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm a believer in seeing what I want to achieve. Yeah. That's why even my dream cars growing up, I bought the Audi R8 car and the G-Wagon car. Mm-hmm. The little toy cars were just sitting on my fucking desk while I was working every day. And I was like, there we go. That's like epic. Cause I, I have a, uh, I have a, on every single one of my phones. Yeah. Um, I put like something that I want, and every time I've done that, within two years, I've bought it. You got it. So I, I, I actually, yeah. when I was younger, um, I had a wall in my house, and I lived in a, uh, like a penthouse, like loft. Yeah. Um, and it was like it was old. Like it wasn't like I say penthouse because it was the penthouse, but it was like. Not like your fucking modern day Miami penthouses. Yeah. This this was, was like in the, the, the it was in the fucking ghetto, <laughs> in the fucking ghetto in a loft style one bedroom. But I had a ladder, like a huge ladder, and I would get on top of my ladder, and I would and I ended up writing on the entire wall That's before sick. I left the place. The entire wall that was white was covered in black writings, and I would write down. I would get up there and I would draw a bubble, and I'd be like business plan one, and I would write out an entire business plan, and then I would write goals over here, and I would spend hours and hours and hours just writing, so and then I would write it on the mirrors, like so my important. bathroom mirrors. Yeah, I do the same thing. So I print it off my vision board and I put it in every bathroom in my whole house. Yeah, so that's every time the, I go in the bathroom, it's on the mirror. And it sounds like a freak. It sounds like a freakish thing, like to do, but it's kind of like it works, man. I used to like. It's even like the little things, like a grateful rock. I had a grateful rock, mm-hmm. and every time I'd put my hand in my pocket, I'd touch it. I'd say five to ten things I'm grateful for in life. That's cool, man. And it's just like it would be something simple, like I'm grateful for my toes. But see, what you just said right there, I want to I want to break this down right quick. I think it's one of the most powerful and undermined things out there. Period. And the reason why is because a lot of people, like you said, live in their fucking head. Yeah. All right. I, w- I want you to do an exercise with me right quick because I think it'd be cool. All right. I'm going to count right. to 10 out loud. And okay. I want you to count to 10 in your head with me. And don't stop until I tell you to. Okay. Just count to 10. Yeah. Just count to 10 in your head. Don't okay. say it out loud. So one, two, three, four. Keep counting and don't stop. Keep counting. Now say your name out loud. Anthony Williams. What happened to the count? It went away. It stopped. Because when you vocalize, you stop all internal thoughts. A lot of individuals never achieve their goals or live a positive life because they are internalizing negativity instead of vocalizing any positivity. Interesting. So every single day, they're thinking about all the bullshit they don't have, all the things they had never achieved, all the stuff that happened on a daily basis, instead yep. of just talking about just the shit they want. Yeah. Do that affirmation shit, grateful shit. I do that every day. I yeah. spend five minutes, and I don't like pre-plan it. I just voice note my phone. I've got like a massive list. I hit voice note. I'm like... Yo, July 22nd, 2022, it's in there. And then I just say what's ever on my mind. I just mind dump about the things I want to achieve and what I want my life to look like. Epic. How close do you think you are to your goals? Very far. Very far? Very far, yeah. Because 
I don't set like little goals anymore. Like I've set like some little ones, obviously. I would like to be able to make seven figures a month personally outside of the business. I would like to be able to, again, never fucking fly commercial. That's a dope goal. But like, I've wrote things on my vision board that I can't even comprehend. Like I told you yesterday, the word billionaire. Yeah. I wrote billionaire because when it comes down to making money, like I really like giving back and I give back as much as I can right now. Mm -hmm but I won't sacrifice the life I've created to give back. Yeah. And I refuse to do that shit because then I, that takes I'm, away from I'm my all family. For that. So how does that make you feel? What? That your goals are so far away and that you feel that far away. How does that make you feel? Honestly, not bad because yeah. it keeps me grinding. It makes okay. me fucking feel happy because whenever I feel like I'm like accomplished and everything's done, I get super fucking bored and I don't want to do anything anymore. What do you think is going to happen when you achieve those goals? How will that make you feel? I'll be amped for probably 30 seconds and then start something else. That's how I've done everything else, dude. <laughs> so the right. reason I wanted to bring that to the point was yeah. because a lot of these entrepreneurs that, uh, that we talk to and that we build with yeah. and that, that you're building, they're looking for something in the future. They're looking yeah. for this massive future goal, yeah. not realizing that when they get there, that goal is going to be no more. That goal is no longer going to exist. Exactly, that goal dude. is going to be absolutely nothing now yeah. to them. So don't forget to, while you're building, right enjoy. Now. Yeah, bro. One that's day at a time. So big to me One now. day at a time. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. So how are you right now trying to scale your business more? What are, what are actions that you're taking? So the biggest thing currently is we're making an adjustment in the way that we do marketing. So again, we run our business a little bit differently than other partners. All right. Brian is 100% acquisition. I am 100% delivery and operations. Now, over the last little bit here with having my girl Janelle, all right, and my homie Josh help me with the coach's end, our delivery is next level. All right, we have like a 97 to a 95% retention rate on a monthly wow. basis. With our students, they barely drop off and the community is so lit that nobody ever wants to leave. So my goal in the next year is to start pulling income from my social medias, which we've never done before. Okay. We've tried, but it was a, let's just half-ass fucking try and try to operate the same way that we did in Brian's account, which, doesn't fucking work from mm -hmm. account to account to account. It's got to be approached a different way. Yeah. So the goal now is to like make people know who the fuck I am in the business side and be like, yo, doors are open. You want to live a life like this? Come the fuck in so we can scale it to the next level. Can I offer you and the audience one tip of advice that I yes. learned from experience? Yes. Don't lose what you did Never. to get there. Never. I did. Mm. I did. And... I've watched business partners do the same thing. I've watched people and companies fail. I've watched companies hurt themselves mm -hmm. because they are no longer doing what it took for that took them to get there. So when trying to scale, they're hiring and bringing on people. We do the same thing. Yeah. For a while, I lost what I was doing to get there. Yeah. The grind every single day because yeah. it's easy to get comfortable. It's easy to get complacent and it's complacent and it's very, very easy to get lost in that. So, so my one tip of advice is if you wake up at five o'clock every single morning and that's what you do in order to be successful eat or well, successful, you are successful. <laughs> I meant like yeah. if that's what you do in order to like your business, your vision to be there. Once you're there, don't lose that. Oh, never did. Don't. That's something like. I carry, I, I talk about that all the time. So I fucking love that advice because what we did, and we actually kind of went down the path that you were just saying, we started to make little changes, hiring the wrong people, putting people in positions. And then we started to see the shift in a bad light. Yes. I was just aware enough to fucking shoot it. In love the head that. Right away. Love I was like, that. that's done. Yeah. But that like waking up at the same time, pushing the grindstone, doing the same things every day. Like, bro, when I talk about every day, I mean every day. We do vacations, it's 3 a.m. every day. I love that. So I like, mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to say I'm not that. Like, when I go on vacation, yeah. I'm relaxing. Yeah. But I'm also going to tell you, don't don't forget to take your wins yes. and say, damn, this is a fucking win. Because yes. sometimes there's nothing like waking up at, you know, 6 or 7, some the evening. My wife makes me do that shit sometimes. And <laughs> sipping a cup of coffee yeah. outside. It's cool, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. So taking the wins, man. So what, um, you said your goal now is to be a billionaire. Yeah, the goal, I just wrote that down because what we talked about yesterday, giving back is the best thing in the entire world. And I feel like billion, with billions, you'd be able to make the biggest change. Yes. And again, not lose the life you created. Yep. Or I feel like a lot of individuals, like right now I do my best to give away as much as I can. I give away the clothes off my back. I'll give yeah. away as much money as I actually can. But to be able to make like a drastic fucking change in the world, 
it's got to be done by people who got the fucking big money. And the people that, that have core values. And speaking of core values, you said earlier you have your, your, your principles, your core values. What are those? Um, if I had my phone and they didn't jack me, I'd be able to read them off <laughs> right now. Up, oh, see? Can't jack phones. That's yeah. what, this is why you don't jack phones. Yeah, if they were able to break it down for me, because I've got 12. 12 core values. From, so to be able to read it all out right now off my heart, there's no fucking way I can. If they give me my phone back, they'll be able do you, to. Do you have, like, oh, we got it. Incoming. Incoming. Slide mm -hmm. it in. Let's see. <laughs> Other one, Daniel. Wrong one, bro. This is the work phone. Let's see here. How does he get his phone back and I don't get mine? Bro, it's because you asked me a question about it. This is horse this shit. Is Can you ask on. me a question about my phone? <laughs> <laughs> so we can start breaking it down uh, like that. But I'm actually very curious to this, like, because mm -hmm. core values, because I believe in core values is a very, very big key thing into life. And you said you want to change people's lives. Yeah. And it's very easy to lose them core values when you start making money. I've, like I said, I've been through that phase. I know yeah. what it's like to make that fuck you money. Yes. When you start making that fuck you money, things become more accessible, more easy, and life gets mm -hmm. different. And like now, I'm back in this state of like, like no, like I'm not comfortable anymore. Like I'm yeah. not comfortable anymore. So I keep putting myself in uncomfortable situations, mm -hmm. and like that's what I'm loving to do. So I'll, I'll walk you through the morning routine that I do because it'll help with this breakdown. So Love as it. you can see at the top here, for everybody just listening to this, it says gratitude note, affirmation note, workout plan, review for self health. Now what I do every day is. As soon as I'm done my, I wake up at 3 a.m., I do a cold shower. I don't do it for the fucking anything else. I do it for my arm still. The cold water helps with my circulation so I can actually train in the morning. Then I do gratitudes, just like you were talking about. I think it's the most powerful thing in the world because I spent a long time in my life not accepting my wins and just mm -hmm. playing them off. People are like, you look good. I'd be like, fuck you. You're being <laughs> successful. Fuck off. Like, was, yeah. I'd always pass it. Uh, affirmations, then I do my 5% list. And I always speak about this and nobody knows what the fuck it is. Well, what I do... Can we hear is, it? We're going to hear it now? Yeah. What I We're going to figure out the 5% list yes, right now. What I realized was until I... If I didn't start centering myself, again, I was never going to internalize the life I had for fucking Cade. And I was going to pass off a lot of shit. That's my son's name. Cade Wolf De Silva Love is that. his name. So I wrote down my seven core values which are honesty, discipline, ambition, love, integrity, creativity, and responsibility. Now, what I did with this list is I wrote them all down and then I rated them. Like yeah, on a scale of one to 10, how honest do I feel like I am every day? I wrote seven. Discipline, I wrote seven. Ambition, I wrote six. Love, I wrote five. Integrity, I wrote seven. Creativity, I wrote eight. Responsibility, I wrote six. Now, a couple of these I left the same because let's be real, creativity, other core values don't really alter it. I'm a creative individual, whether I feel good or I don't. Like, it just pops mm -hmm. into my fucking brain. On top of that as well, same thing with, like, ambition. But love was incredibly low to me, all right? I didn't love myself. I didn't allow myself to feel my wins, and I didn't allow myself to sink in anything. Um, my integrity was incredibly low, all right? And without integrity, you have nothing. With integrity, you don't need anything else. So I've changed my ratings again. Because if integrity is low, nothing can be above it. So I lowered them all down. Again, that's all kind of like playing around with it. You guys can do it if you want. The main part of my 5% list is this. I took the top four core values that mean the most for growth in life, for me, my family, my people, and everybody else. And I asked myself every fucking morning, dude, seven days a week, 365 days a year, how can I be 5% more? I say this out loud. And then I look at this list and whatever speaks to my soul, I do. I'm like, you know what? Integral today. Because I said I was going to fucking do something for my wife and I didn't fucking do it. So I'm going to make sure it's done. Yeah. How can I be 5% more honest today? There's something that's burning in me that I haven't said to my business partner. So I'm going to be a fucking man. I'm going to go have the conversation. Yep. This is what I do for my core values every day Love of that. the entire year. I might need you to send me that. It's dope. I'll send it to you. <laughs> Dude, it's, I might need that. I might need that. That's it helps a epic, lot, man. man. And I've, this has been something that I've started to teach a lot of the people that are in our company and that just come around me because that right there has shifted my whole mentality. Yeah. It's like, it's, we all have shit that we don't do. Yeah. We all have shit that we just push off to the next day. We all have shit that we fucking neglect. It's accountability, man. But like that, that you're just choosing a shitty yeah. fucking life because now you're just lying to yourself. Yep. So when you wake up with that doubt, with that hatred, with that fucking lack of passion, the only person you can blame is the motherfucker looking in the mirror because you're the one giving yourself the lack of self-confidence for not doing the work you need to do. Yep. Accountability, man. Yeah, man. I love that, bro. Mm -hmm. I feel, I believe that having accountability partners in life too is a really, really big yes, thing. Dude. I know you're talking about it like your, your business partner for you yeah. is a really big accountable partner. Yeah, accountability. Right. For me, it's the same. My business partner is an accountability partner mm -hmm. to me. Uh, we hold each other and we say like, you, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you yeah. do this? And if you didn't do it, well, then you fucking slacked. You yeah. fucked off. You messed up. You know, don't be wrong. We have fun and we do our things or we do that. But like in reality, 
that's what it takes, man. Yes. It's well everything. Done. Accountability is fucking everything, and the world is lacking it in a big way. And this is why I'm so truthful in everything I do. I just say it how it is. The truth is not a bad thing. There's yeah. no such thing as tough love. There's yeah. no such thing as harsh truth. There's no such thing as real truth. There's just fucking truth. Yep. If you're fat, you're fucking fat. If you're broke, <laughs> you're fucking broke. That's how it is. Yep. But a lot of people don't like hearing it. Yeah. They just want to hide behind I stuff know. and play their fucking game and whine about their lives. But if you just had the accountability, someone in your life being like, no, you don't look good in that outfit. Yeah. All right. Or no, that wasn't cool. You should fucking not do that. The world would be so much better. Yeah, I, I agree, man. That's actually one of the reasons why like, I really fucked with your post and I really mm. fucked with everything that you were doing because... So many times Conrad, like Conrad has been like, yo, we got to talk about this. We got to do this or whatever. And I like, like trying to, and I'm like, no, just fucking, we'll make it raw and real. And then finally me and him got in that groove of like, it's just raw and real. Yes. Everything that we put out there, raw and real. Whatever I'm saying, whenever I'm saying it, how I'm saying it, it's just raw and real. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, none of this shit is pre-staged or pre-fucking recorded. I mean, yeah, we might have ideas to do like creative shit that like is a little, but other than that. None of it's that way. It's so much better like that, dude. The Man. world is way too fake. Everybody Love wants that. to be perfect and everybody wants to say something politically correct because they don't want to offend other people. I just don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. I, mean, I don't give a flying fuck, dude. What um what is something that you want to build outside of the fitness industry? What is something like entrepreneurship that you want to do? A clothing brand. A clothing brand? Yeah. I just like fashion, dude. And yeah. it's like I don't like the typical like regular fashion like i told you today i fucking hate jeans i do not wear them i refuse to i'm mm-hmm. like as a sweatpants or like sport pant guy but i want to create something that's like a mix between like street and fitness the one brand asrv is my fucking favorite i have to check them out oh they're dope it's because to me they're versatile you can wear them in anything and to me clothing is just something that you can express i, I love yourself it with. too like so for me like clothing has been that's like actually something i'm working on right now it's creating yeah. my own clothing line like that's why i'm always wearing the rings i'm like i've always got my fucking watch on i got my two chains of war for the last five years and this one's a anchor that i got from my wife this is an aries sign star sign that i got from a shop in bali and it's just i'm always got my little things like little love things that. that show me me epic man um have you ever thought about diving into the financial market um I've that's thought what about i do it, but like me looking at the financial market is like a kid looking at fucking Chinese, even though they're English. It's like, <laughs> yeah. bro, I've never felt more stupid looking at fucking graphs and stocks and Forex or whatever the fuck it's called and everything else than I do when I, I do bet that. I could teach you in three hours how to Probably. read a chart and make it understand it. Probably. Bro. I might I mean, need to do that challenge. I'm definitely, I in. definitely could. Cause it's that not video. that hard. Yeah. It's not hard mm-hmm. to understand grass things. I do want to, because yeah. it, it reached a point where like, I'm very immature in the aspect of like making money with my money and okay. I'm open to it. My whole goal is just to create the best life ever. Mm-hmm. Like my tagline was just freedom for my family mm-hmm. because I didn't want my family, my wife, to experience what I went through. So as quickly as I could, when I started making money, I retired her. It was like the beginning of 2019, end of 2018. I was like, you don't want to fucking work here anymore because we actually met at the same company. I was in the field. She was in the office. I was like, quit. So she fucking quit, and she's been at home with me ever since doing like random jobs until she became a mother. Um, and now she's just doing that, which is fucking, I'm super happy that she's happy with it. But yeah, I was like, I'm immature in that aspect. I don't know a lot. It was more like, what do I do with all this cash now that I'm fucking making? And so that's, that's, you bring that up and that's a really cool thing to do. Cause, um, I, w- I want to say this too. A lot of things that you do is money making skills. Yeah. Okay. Money making skills are very, very, um, I would say are harder than, than money using, using money to make more money. Mm. And so learning that skill first is a very powerful thing i mean dude i could give you probably 25 30 things like in the matter of a we sit down for 10 minutes and i could give you so many things that could use your money to make more money without putting any work into it but it's smaller money but you have something that's very powerful and that's a money making skill mm-hmm. so learning that and like teaching people that like that's something that like i believe all business is just about the same I agree. Like, it's just about the same, it's right? It's all, like, one step in a different direction. Uh-huh. You can make another one, yeah. Yep. And so, like, I've always wanted to say, hey, I want to create a business that just helps people with their business. That's helps cool. them with themselves, helps them with their mindset. But, like, it's very cool that you learned that first because a lot of people, like, work at a job and then they go and they go to college, they go to school, they do all this other stuff, they get a job and then they start investing in their real estate, they start yeah. investing into, the, you know, stock market and they wait, you know, and they get this money. And I, I didn't want to do that. That's not who I was. I Fuck that. that Everyone that watches this podcast, I truly believe is just like that as well. Yeah. So 
I think it's really cool. So if you're looking for more ways to make money, obviously, now you got him to follow. Yeah. You got me to follow. You got everyone else that I'm looking, talking to as well. So, like, we're all here to help, man. Like, I tell people all the time, there's no such thing as competition at the top. Dude, I 100%. There's no such thing that there anymore. Isn't. I'm like, some people like to try to create competition, and they like to talk shit, and they like to make these fake things That's out of whatever. That's weak-minded people. But I don't think there is, and this, I always talk about it. I said this on stage at the last event that we threw. Like, the reason why I'm so gung-ho on just trying to give everybody everything. Like, this is what I am doing to grow on social media. Just go do it. Okay. Like, it's not a fucking hard thing. It's the easiest thing in the world. I, like, showed everybody my entire process. And I, the reason why I say that is because there's 8 billion people on this planet, and I can't help them myself. Like, we, like there's enough money and success for everyone to win. Yep. But... It's just fucking getting people out of their heads to do the work in the first place. Yeah, that's a that's a hard one, man. Yeah. So um, I got a question too. One more, one more before we start wrapping this up. One more question for me is: if someone had twenty minutes a day, like which everyone has twenty minutes a day, mm. to do something every single day in order to get themselves in shape, what would you recommend? To get themselves in shape. Yeah, because I because you know you said fitness is the foundation, right? Yeah. You're saying that this is the start. So how can someone that is lazy, someone that's overweight, someone that's tired, someone that's exhausted, can they can they can do one like one thing a day for twenty fucking minutes, which everyone can do, and then we challenge you to fucking do that if you're a lazy, overweight piece of shit. Do this one <laughs> thing every single fucking yeah. day for twenty minutes. What is that to you? Walk. God, I love that. I was gonna say the same thing. That's it. Yeah. Because I'm like, uh, let's put it this way. I like training because I like how my body feels. I also like looking in the mirror and being like, fuck, my arms have gotten bigger today. This is fucking lit. Like, yeah. I like looking good. Yeah. So, to me, it's I'm going to make this shit work. All right? I don't sleep four to six hours a night because I have to. I choose to because then I can put my time in my fitness and not take time away from my wife and my kid mm -hmm. at night. Now, if you don't have any more time than 20 minutes, walk. Like, mm -hmm. fucking walk, dude. 10,000 steps is the equivalent of 20 minutes of cardio. It's Love pretty that. fucking easy to get 10,000 steps. A lot of people just sit on their fucking ass all day because they go from the car to the office to the couch to the fucking bed. Mm -hmm. Love that. I, I, I always say, too, and use that 20 minutes for other things as yeah, well. Yeah, put, put a fucking podcast in your fucking ears. Put this podcast in your fucking yeah, ears bro. while you're walking. Habit Watch every episode. And 20 minutes. And I also say make it like... um. I want uh, the word like like intense walking or like not it wasn't intense walking. I don't I forgot the fucking word, <laughs> <laughs> but make it like where it's intent. Yeah. Like like don't just like walk. Be intentional. Yeah. Like yeah. you're like walk for a purpose and walk that for 20 fucking minutes a day. And I, I can promise you your life will start changing. That's Dude, something that's I do every day is I, I walk for 20. I walk for 20 to 30 yeah. minutes every single no day, every what, morning. Man. When I first wake up, I walk. Dude, there was uh, check my that we actually just did with our entire company. We brought an individual in to kind of teach mindset and walk through a bunch of stuff. And he taught this walk morning routine. And he's like, as soon as you get out of bed, go for a walk, 5 to 15 minutes on the walk, which is an acronym. You're going to affirm through, like what you want your life to be like and who you are. You're going to love, send out two gratitude texts, and then you're going to kill, write down two things that you're going to kill that day to progress your life forward. Everybody in our whole company by the end of that 60 days was like, I feel fucking amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. All you did is move your body more yeah. and get out of your mind and into what you want to achieve. Dude, walking for 20 minutes, but also fucking eat right. Yeah, like, yeah. I got to say that. There's no way I'm, I can't. We can't just pass that by. Fucking eat right, especially yep. if you want to lose weight. All right. I'm not even going to go okay, down that eat path. Eat right. What's eat right? Um, what's your fucking tip to eating right? It's, it's go on fucking caloriecalculator.net or any other calorie calculator and figure out what your maintenance, your deficit, and your surplus calories are. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you got to eat whole foods and all that other shit. Eat whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. But if you want to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. If you want to gain muscle, you need to be in a caloric surplus. If you want to maintain, you need to be at maintenance. That's just how it is. There's no other law. There's no other way. There's no other science. If anybody tells you it is, they're fucking idiots. They're just trying to make you buy their random bullshit. It's just if you want to lose weight, put yourself in a deficit and fucking walk and then eat the foods that you want to eat. Yeah, I Cheers. love that. Can I, can, I, I'll, can I tell you what I typically do? Yeah. So what I typically do is I try not to eat before I achieve, unless I achieve something. So I have to have mm. an achievement before I eat. So typically I don't eat until about 2 o'clock every day. Just because? Well, I didn't achieve enough until 2. Touche. Typically. You ever I don't, I don't, like I don't deserve to eat. Yeah, typically I don't deserve to eat Touché. until 
until whatever about 2 works, o'clock. Man. And that's just kind of been my thing. And then mm-hmm. after 2 o'clock, I'm like, I'm done. I'm free. I can eat whatever. I can do whatever. I like and that. I can pretty much. But that that's actually one of the main things that I, I went from. I was over 200 pounds. Really? Yeah, a fat. I was and that was, I'm like 162, 160, nice. 163. Dude, it's, it's finding what works for you mm. and hitting it. Like, I don't tell anybody to do what I do. Yeah. Everybody's like, what do you do? I'm like, don't fucking worry about it. Like, What's your morning routine? I'm like, don't worry about it, dude. Yeah. Don't do what I do. Like, yeah, it's not going to work. I'm not trying to be this parent that says, do as I say, not as mm. I do. But I'm like, I, I do shit differently for my mind. I figured out what worked for me. I feel like this is a very good narrative uh, change, a narrative shift that we should be talking about to a lot of people is instead of telling people what to do, because it's not working for everybody. Yeah. Why don't we help people find what they need to do yeah, for them? Bro. That would actually be a cool, crazy narrative change to shift the industry and talk about things. Because so many people are trying to tell people what to do and how, like, oh, it's going to work for you because it worked for me. No, in reality, it's not. But how can we help people find? Yes. And that goes through trial and error and experimentation. Yeah. And taking a shitload of fucking L's in the process. Yeah. And allowing yourself to be like, okay, yep. okay. I love good. that. I love that, man. All right, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Okay. All right, I do this every time. It's like part of my favorite segment that I do okay. in this whole fucking podcast. Right here, this beautiful camera, right there. I need you to make eye contact All with right. it. I need you in about two sentences or less. I was intense. <laughs> I'd be scared. Two sentences or less, okay. give them life advice. Right now. Right now. Same thing, bro. Take messy action on the goal that you want to achieve today. Stop playing the what if game because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Yesterday is just a memory. And the messy action you take now could completely transform your life. Boop. Mic drop. I love it, bro. There we go. Fire. Yeah, you're you, like mate. the first person in a hot minute that's actually done it in less than fucking two sentences. Everyone else is like a fucking. I thought that was monologue. a rule, dog. I'm it, it was. Keeping it it steady, was, dude. man. <laughs> it, it is. But like everyone's just like a fucking trying to like you know thirty six philosopher. Yeah, and so I'm let like, me tell you my life I'm story, like, jeez, dog. dog. <laughs> had, I had someone. I don't remember who it was. I'm not gonna name names. It was a great podcast. It was yeah. super awesome. But it was like a solid three minutes. Nah. <laughs> and I was like, damn, bro, I can't even speak that long. <laughs> Straight to the I function. love that. Real quick, quick. Real quick, where can people find you on social? Uh, pretty much everywhere. Just search for my name, Cole Lewis De Silva, L U I S. You'll find me on YouTube, podcasts, and everything else. Love it. All right, please, if you have not already, like comment subscribe make sure you're sharing this make sure that notification bell is turned on as well because you want to be notified every time we drop one of these fucking podcasts we got a lot of things coming we got some heat coming we got some fire coming we got some of the best people on this fucking podcast and it's going to be epic and it's going to keep growing and it's going to keep booming because everyone's a fucking living icon hell yeah let's go let's go g boom peace win bada boom bada beat we stop we go